All right, hello everyone, this is Chara. This is gonna be a bit of a different video, and today I wanna go over one of the most insane Splatoon speedruns that's ever happened, which is the original game being beaten in under 50 minutes. And joining me for this will be the mad lad himself, Talon, who currently has this world record. Yo, what's up, y'all? I'm Talon Tronian. I have been speedrunning Splatoon games since 2017 and got this world record back in September. I currently hold every world record in Splatoon 1 and a couple in Splatoon 2 as well. And we get to talk about my favorite speedrun and my favorite speed game. I'm excited. All right. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. So one of the many questions I'm probably gonna bring up during the run is I noticed both Splatoon 1 and 2, you start from the tutorial stage, and of course that has a default sensitivity. So you just play on a default sense to avoid a time loss, or do you change your sensitivity? Yeah, so since it's faster just to keep your sensitivity, you have to get used to default sensitivity in both of the games. It's slightly different in each just because of the motion delay on each game. Like Splatoon 1 has less motion delay than 2, but once you've played default sensitivity enough, you just get used to it, so it's really not a big deal. It's minus 1, right? What's up? It's, it's minus, minus one, 1, I think, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. I got extremely bad RNG here, you have no idea. RNG? Like what part? So, you know these Octoballs? Yeah. So, tinking that Octoball there to push it off the platform is basically random every time because Octoball knockback in this game makes zero sense. So, so you reset a lot of runs in this stage. Like, uh, this is a massive run killer. And you skip the cannon here? Skip the cannon by hopping up to this fence and it'll let you get enough ink. And if you've played the stage fast enough, you can get all the way up to the top. I somehow got past those massive gaps. Don't even ask. <laughs> yeah, you know, reacted to that. Yeah, that's a really yeah. cool skip. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I unlocked Seekers before we went into this level because I collected 100 power eggs at a level two. And Seekers, you throw them as a different sub weapon and it lets you paint a straight line forward. And that gets used almost everywhere in this run to cover large distances. Super useful. Yeah, they climb up walls is probably way different from Splat 2 curling, so I'd imagine they're a lot more useful than Splat 2 curling for speedrunning. Well, unfortunately, they have a lot of startup delay and they reduce your speed as you're throwing them, so you have to actually kind of be smart when you're using them in this game. Uh, yeah. Unlike curling bombs, which are instant. Yeah, that that's true. It's pretty interesting they have their own like, trade-offs. Okay, so I'm seen with bosses, you do this weird thing, so look on the bottom left. Yeah. So, so if, how does that work? <laughs> so, Splatoon games are obviously well programmed every time. So every time you switch a sub weapon in this game, it fires one extra shot out of the hero shot. Mm -hmm. So I have like this really weird hand position that I do on the gamepad where I completely take my hand off of the stick and put two fingers on top of the D-pad and like vibrate my entire arm just to get sub weapon switching fast enough and that allows for the hero shot to pop these boss tentacles super fast that this is really a, like odd. one of the hardest things to learn and get consistent with in this run it's pain so you have, you have to be a masher That's you have to get extremely good at this trick to be at top level and it is not easy to learn well I'm, i guess i'm not gonna be a top level speedrunner because i cannot <laughs> mash it's not even like a mash. It's just like, it's something else entirely, really. But okay. huh. it's weird. Weird quirk of the game, it's... I never knew that. Yeah, it's also uh, way harder on that boss and slower because you only have two sub weapons. Once you get the burst bomb and have three sub weapons, it's way easier. Oh, so okay. it's just slow on boss one. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so coming up in this section is a cycle we have to make between the spreaders by Going fast enough throughout this stage, you can tap the ground here and go through this middle path to just barely squeak by them. Saves like a second in pathing and having to not wait for them. Very nice. Pretty much. That, oh my god, that movement's so bad. I tapped the ground three times because I botched the seeker throw. I'm mad. In between level 7 and level 4, we unlocked level 5, which you can see in the bottom left corner over there. And in level 5, we are going to need burst bombs, which we don't have enough power eggs to get yet. And we're going to just jump back to it with the gamepad later. And that'll also let us get to boss 2 really quickly. So yeah, we're going to do something here called Octoling Glitch. What's going to happen here is that an Octoling and an Inkling have extremely similar player data. 
in this game. So when an Octoling goes through a Zapfish path, it'll actually activate it, even though you're not there. So we go through the stage in a specific way to manipulate an Octoling to jump through it, pop it, and then Octoling jumps through, finishes the stage for us. So the Octoling just grabs the Zapfish and you're good. <laughs> the Octoling grabs the Zapfish and it's given to us without even being up there. 10 second time save. Thank you. That is such a fast level. That was over and like, I mean, we just talked and it's already gone. <laughs> Next level. <Yeah. laughs> 50 second split and it's like 25 to get there. It's so quick. That is awesome. Yeah, so with this Ink Strike boss here, you can like aggro this thing towards you by throwing a splat bomb away from it like that. It'll get scared of it, come towards you, and it's easier to hit it with your shots so you're not just chasing it around the whole time. Do you unlock any more here? Is this it? We unlock burst bombs, that's it for the run. Okay. Fun fact, uh, if you have everything upgraded, Octavio, the final boss, is actually harder in this game. So really? you don't want upgrades. When you have everything upgraded, they decided to buff Octavio drastically, so all of its attacks are faster and have more health. So by not having everything upgraded and just using rapid fire glitch, you can actually make Octavio like 20 seconds faster. It's stupid. So don't upgrade your stuff. Wow, that's so Yeah, you just get the subs and you're good to go. So on this map, we have, we unlock burst bombs for this map. And when you throw a burst bomb and a fan right here, it instantly goes to full acceleration and lets you get to different platforms much faster. So burst bombs are a requirement here to go any sort of fast in sections like this. Do you have to hit the fan directly or does it just have to be any hit of the burst bomb? It, it can be indirect, oh, mostly wow. indirect. So it's really forgiving. Yes, but section coming up is uh, brutal in every sense of the word. So. There's going to be these fan blocks right here. You specifically have to hit those propellers three times. If you hit them any more, they go super far down and you lose five seconds for each. If you hit them two times, you have to hit it another. So you need to make sure you're hitting three shots, then advancing to the next part. Oh, so there's, there's probably a place where a lot of runs die. You have no idea. It's so many, <laughs> so many runs die here. Fans are crazy. Sponges are worse. So sponges are worse. <laughs> sponges. Can I just like go off on a tangent here? Yeah, go we off. Have to... Okay. The so sponges in this game are terribly programmed. Whenever you throw a burst bomb at a sponge, there's a five percent chance it just clips the thing, <laughs> and doesn't ink the sponge. This isn't a joke. It's real. So. <laughs> There's a very real, it's called Burst Bomb Glitch, and you're just praying you don't get it on this stage, because there's a few Burst Bomb throws that will kill you if you get Burst Bomb Glitch. Yeah, so I can it, see those sponges right there over the map. Yeah, so it's, this is kind of an RNG stage, unfortunately, but that's such it a, is what it is. Yeah, that's such a weird glitch, just 5% of the time has nothing to do with the spacing or anything, it's just 5%. 5% 5 of the time, it just gets eaten, yeah. Wow. And. Another thing with burst bombs is that on moving platforms, this will come up later. If you throw a burst bomb on a moving platform, burst bomb glitch activates like 25% of the time. Oh my god, that's horrible. So, Jeez. you have to be, burst bombs are a blessing and a curse. You have to be careful. <laughs> they also burst bomb movement to... here as you're jumping, yeah. How much of their intake do you use? Because it seems to be more than the 25 it was in Splatoon 1. Like... It's about 40%, I think. Oh, okay. You can't... It might be like 35. You can't get a third one off okay. on base tank. I hate this boss internally, but it is cool. So it's gonna have all these little different tentacles on the outside, and we're gonna use the rapid fire glitch to take these out really fast. You throw a splat bomb on the top, and if you have enough ink tank, you can just rapid fire from here, and that'll take out the tentacle. The main concern with this fight is ink tank. So if you run out at any point, you have to go back into your ink, and it's really slow. So you just need to be watching it the whole time and trying to recover when you can, because so you your ink tank's tiny. You don't really try to refill much this entire fight, you're trying to do like each section on as close to one thing as possible. Pretty much. You're trying to get like little bits back while there's like animations that you can't do anything, but there is sometimes not a lot you can do. You have to be careful, that's all. So you'll notice that I'm also playing on the Japanese version. Japanese saves 36 seconds over English due to all the due to all the text boxes. And I'm also playing on version 1.0 as well. That saves four seconds due to slight amounts of loading at the start. But 
it also makes the squeegee enemies faster. So it's kind of a double-edged sword squeegee if you want to use it. Squeegee enemies faster. So you Some notice reason. on level two? Oh, nice secret traveling there too during the cutscene. Yeah, you can overlap it with the cutscene. That's really cool. All right, you ready for this run to get crazy? I'm, I'm so ready. Next two levels, dude, this was all this year. All I'm saying. So Trick got discovered this year by Messiah and was shared to us with Fuyu Nico that you can use this Twinicle here to damage boost over to this metal section. And by burst bombing this ink rail, that's the final checkpoint. So you skip the entire stage and save 55 seconds. Huge. Which is wow. It's it's the biggest time save since World Four skip. It's absurd. Oh yeah, we'll definitely get to that. And that that's it. You just go through the rails and the level's already done. The level is already done. This used to be an extremely difficult stage, and you'll still lose a lot of runs to that trick because it's kind of RNG if the Twinicle's actually gonna shoot you. But that's a massive improvement. So we're gonna be doing something here called Messiah Skip. What we're gonna do is this little metal rim that's coming up after we break these two boxes has collision on it. And what we can do with that is get a jump off of it, then jump to this little metal part and up to this fence. And that skips going down there and grabbing a key at the end of that box section. And it saves 12 seconds. Yeah, the only problem with that is that it's stupid hard. Like- <laughs> It looks hard. And this was also just discovered this year. That was discovered literally three days after Fuyo Skip. Three days after, so just two absolutely <laughs> massive time saves discovered back to back in 2021. That's crazy. Yeah, that's why I picked up this game. Awesome. World record was doable. Yeah, definitely. And the stage is already yeah. done? The stage is done, yeah. It's not as big of a time save as Fuyo Skip is, but at world record level, it's a requirement. You can't get around it. <laughs> so this was like a brutal mental thing to get through to get that in the run first try fuyo first try rule four skip so what you can do here you could go right and use a box to get up to this top part but i'm risky i go to the left and i'm gonna use this geyser rising to give me a ton of momentum what and that'll the? let me jump up to this part yeah that so so weird so if you hit that it saves only a second and a half if you miss that you lose 15 seconds so it's like probably one of the scariest things you can go for in this game, but I need the time save. What can I say? For, uh, props for going for it. Hey, you made it, so worth it. Ink it happen. Worth it! Yeah, with this part, uh, we just ink this part forward instead of going around. The platform's far away for that, so we use two burst bombs here to just jump over to this part and skip waiting for the platform. You also have to be extremely careful not to use a burst bomb here. That's a moving platform. Burst bombs love to clip through that. So 25%, right? Yep. So you just, Don't do it. You it's just not have worth to it. Normally. <laughs> Tap the ground there, throw a burst bomb at that wall. You don't have to wait for the blocks anymore. Nothing too crazy. You're on a big time crunch here. So you're like trying to gun it to the end so you can get on these two blocks before they start moving again. That's fastest cycle that you can get. That's for any percent, yes. In the zinc stage. Yeah, so everything's invisible here. It might look scary to you when you have run this enough. It is not at all. This stage is kind of easy. Yeah, I'd imagine you Except just... for like the ending, yeah. Yeah, you just know where all the platforms are. I know where everything is. I know the line to take here. I can go around all these Twinicles shooting at me with basically zero risk. Yeah. And then this Seeker here will just go up the ink. See, yeah. Or go up the invisible path, yeah. Like, watching it with low memory on this, yeah, I know there's, like, one gap here, and you just, ah, uh, you know. But I remember spending, like, ages when I played this originally, just trying to find that hole. <laughs> Pretty much, so yeah. Fast. And this then this section, this part, we're doing this massive jump here to go around, and then I already know where all this pathing is, so I'm just using my shot, making sure not to aggro these squeegees, because they're really fast in 1.0. And getting through this section... No problem, really. And then, yeah, it's more invisible pathing, but you gotta be pretty quick with it because there's twinicles that can shoot you. Yeah, just so make you sure you have ink on your feet. Don't fall. <laughs> Falling just... here, I skip the checkpoint, so you're losing 30 seconds. Just, you can't. This boss is a complete auto-scroller. There's really nothing to do here. And uh, its only purpose that it serves is to increase your nerves for the big skip that is coming up. So really, it is just wasting my time. I think 
this is probably the trick in terms of any Splatoon speedrunning that most people know, besides maybe skipping the Octoshot and Octo expansion. So World 4 Skip, how does this work? World 4 Skip works because this World 4 barrier coming up here has a three pixel gap on the right side. So what we're gonna do, since that block in the back is pretty close to it, we'll throw a burst bomb at this barrier so we can get a little bit of a path there. I'm lining up my headpiece to a certain part of the ground and lining myself up for a jump there to get past. And that lets us skip World 4 and saves 12 minutes. And then everything in Section 5 is just completely loaded? Is it, it all just it's, works normally? The, it's actually, it gets better. So you would usually get a cutscene going into any world that shows you like the whole thing. Since we skipped World 4, that doesn't happen for World 5. So it's even faster then. So right here, We've been on a global cycle this entire stage, and we're going to be going across these platforms. We're going to burst bomb this end part here, and we can just barely make this jump over to the windmill, which saves about 15 seconds over waiting for it normally and like going slow about it. And if you fall there, you lose a sub 50 pace, which I have done. And I got a 50 11 missing that jump, losing 15. So that's gotta hurt, especially this. You can away. feel my pain. Yes, I can. <laughs> oh, yeah. I actually missed something here. What did you like miss? playing the game. So <laughs> if you uh, go through the stage correctly and like get two different ink strikes at the right time, you can actually kill the striker using the balloon oh. and it'll one shot it. But I messed up. And it only loses about a second, but I messed it up here and took that time loss. But hey, my best possible time is still 49.45, so something bad must have happened. So we're grabbing the key at the end of this flutter section, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this key to unlock a lockbox, which has a gusher. This gusher will take us to the top part, and we need to ride these flutters, and particularly find the sniper who has a key for the ending. And this sniper can spawn basically anywhere in this whole section on any of the flutters. So it's kind of RNG where this flutter will actually end up with the sniper that you want. And I got pretty lucky there, but nothing too insane. I didn't get screwed. That's what matters the most. Yeah, especially at this point in the round. Yeah, so if it spawns in like the back right corner, you can lose like 10 seconds. It's awful. So... The thing about 23 is that, yes, there's sponges, but there's also going to be octolings at the end, and we're going to, like, try to use an Inksuka here, and there's going to be, like, a Manip with a bomb throw. Oh, yeah, this is interesting. So we grab this Inksuka here. This Inksuka inks up all of these sponges at the same time, so it'll get through, us through this path much faster. Then having to wait. Fell down there. That's a time loss. And it inks the path to the super jump. Absolutely perfect. It does, but you have to hop around oh. that expanding sponge there. The thing about that, just on a little tangent, is that that sponge expands further than its normal size. And if it clips you while you're jumping, you just die. So you need to make sure to like strafe right on that jump to get anywhere. Oh. And then we're baiting out these bombers. So they're not throwing a bomb when we are trying to burst on my sponge. And then here, them? you're trying to like bait them by like going out of ink at certain times. Uh, okay. So they throw their bombs at good times. You throw a bomb at this first one, it'll die. And if you do this movement really specifically, that one will spawn there. And then you can take it out. That's a pretty easy manip to drop. Nice. It's cool you can manipulate the octoling spawning, like the second one. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I lost five seconds there though to my best possible and that makes the time crunch so much more real. Yeah, best possible time right now, 49.51, so very little room for error for the sub 50. And it gets worse. And it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> 22. More burst bombs, more Inzuka shots. These switches, they activate instantly with a burst bomb throw. So we're just gonna be trying to lob some burst bombs and we're gonna do like a, I guess it's a little skip coming up after this octoball part, but. What matters is that we pick up that Inzuka. It's required for later, basically. <laughs> Take out all four of these Twinicles. And what we can do here, there's that switch above that jump pad there. If we jump off at the right time, we can get a burst bomb up there. 
and skip like this whole little puzzle. Oh, nice. Not too bad. Take out the first Twinicle with a bomb, two Inzuka shots, take out both the snipers, make a path, and then two burst bombs for the switches. Dodge the Octoballs. Do not let them knock you off. <laughs> I have lost a sub-50 right there. Oh, wow. The, yeah, the Octoballs seem like... They don't look threatening, but it seems like you have a very little margin for error. A Seeker finally gets to kill something. <laughs> Seeker gets to take out an enemy. You pop a Bulber to grab this key. Oh, it's interesting. It lets you go through that. I'm surprised it won't bump you. It doesn't, like... Yeah, it doesn't take you to knock back City or anything. You're just fine going through. Nice. But... That was also sloppy. I lost more time. So, 49.54. I've been in this exact same position before. 49.50 more... 50... Yeah. 49.54 BPT going into Octavio. So, this is not my first time. And this time I will not fail, is essentially what I'm going into this fight, mindset-wise. Right. Well, it's the finale against the good Octavio boss fight. <laughs> the good Octavio fight! The one that actually is skill-based instead of complete RNG. I love it. Yeah, I, I heard Splatoon 2's Octavia is just entirely luck-dependent on how fast yep. it goes. It's completely RNG the whole thing. It's like two minutes of variance, yeah. Jesus. This one, it's it's two minutes of variance from a casual player to a speedrunner doing every skip that you can do here. So, flips the script a little bit, but... If there's any time to be good at rapid fire glitch, it is now. Every fist, every subwoofer, <laughs> you have to, you have to, RFG everything. So it is just called a subwoofer. I've always just called it like an I. <laughs> yeah, right. they're actually called subwoofers. Well, now I know. Everyone gets little stuff wrong, yeah. So is there any way to do any form of manipulation here? We bait Octavio to be aiming into that corner, so the fist is a little bit closer to us. You fire into the sky to get like some fall off shots in and then you rapid fire glitch the fist. So you want to be as close as possible to knock the fist back? It depends, but yes. So this fight is harder. extremely complex, yeah. This fight, yeah, this is... There is no better final boss in a Splatoon game. Maybe in a Rage in 3 in a speedrunning sense, but this is, this is hard to compete with. Yeah, it, uh, the first Octavia fight is a classic, like speedrun or not, I really enjoy it. Yeah. In phase two, this is where fist skips start coming into play. So if you hit back a fist fast enough with RFGs, it'll actually contact Octavio before the second one comes out, and that's going to apply to the next set of fists. And when you separate the fist like that, it does far more knockback to Octavio because he's like resetting his animation. Uh, so you don't you don't want the fist to hit at the same time. You want them to be somewhat spread out and it'll knock them back more. Yeah, you want it to like wait like here and then get this RFG. It does way more knockback that way. Yeah, it's good that it saves a lot of time. Yeah. The whale is a lot smaller than I remember. <laughs> You can also kind of just stand in it for a long time because it takes forever to start up from Octavio. Yeah. So I just stand in here. Oh wow, that's a lot more out. time than I thought, yeah. Exactly. You kind of just have to adapt to that and realize like, yeah, you don't got to be scared. Burst bomb the sponges. If you get burst bomb glitch there, oh my god, it is the worst. <laughs> that's the worst time to get it, huh? <laughs> Yeah, because you gotta, like, RFG to, like, keep Octavio going forward. See, if you get a burst bomb glitch, you have to, like, think on your feet on what you're gonna do. I'm guessing Mizuka's gonna come in handy with the subwoofer here. Exactly. That's exactly it! Because in Phase 3, you're gonna notice here that Octavio is, like, super far back. So, we're gonna need the Zuka to actually Speaking hit Octavio from this, this distance. Let's see the perfect three Zuka shots. Bang. One. Two. Snapping. <laughs> three. I, I'm guessing the subwoofer for launch, like, the angle he does is random, right? It is, of three directions. So, yeah, Technically, you, you can't just center is it. fastest, but you're not going to get it every time. None of the directions are that slow, though, yeah. so it's not a big deal. You can actually skip the second fist there 
and go narrowly across this barrier here to skip a fist in this cycle or this phase. It saves 2.5 seconds, but I'm looking at my BPT. I got 49.55. So if I take this time lost here, it makes this safe and consistent and I can lock in on the sub 50. Because I don't care about the best time possible. I just care about the sub 50 at this point. That's like where I'm at in this grind. Yeah, it's good. It's like the risky thing you went for earlier on the bluefin stage now gives you enough time to do this. Yeah, like I go for all these risks earlier that I get some leeway later. That sounds like a really good strat. Like more runs get to go to the end if you do the riskier stuff earlier. Yeah. I mean, ideally you go for everything, but yeah, but I mean, for you a, can, a sub-50 goal like this, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then this, Octavia's close enough this time that we can just RFG the woofers. Do you hold the Zuka for the last one? Because I believe you yes. only get a bubbler. So you don't get the bubbler, you hold on to the Zuka for the phase five. Yeah, we, there's only two Zukas in the fight, so we need him for three and five, because Octavia's really far away on those two. This fist skip, you have no idea how close I was to failing this here. Like, I almost lost the run of this fist. Oh, you're that so close to the whale. <laughs> oh my god. You actually just take the whale. You have armor. You're oh, fine. Oh, <laughs> okay. So you just don't care at that point. Yeah. But... Minus 1.6, I just have to close out this fight. And it is... It's tense. You have to stay in the ink. This whole time, get these proper fist hitbacks by like delaying the first one, hitting back the second one when it's close to you. Keep a good supply of armor, you're gonna need it at the end. I have three layers, I'm fine. You have to armor through the whale at the end. Yes. You you ideally wanna have two layers just in case you make a mistake, but I have three, so it doesn't matter. And then at the end here, just hit the Inkzuka shots. They're super fast, but if you miss it, your run's gone. So just don't miss for it. <laughs> just don't miss. And just ignore the giant whale in your face. Honestly, yeah. it's not it's not as bad visual wise to see through the whale as something like rain spot too. It actually looks a lot easier to see through it. I kinda like it. Yeah. First mom Octavio back and barely got it. And time ends right there. Oh my God. Uh, time ends when Octavio hits the machine again. Wow. What a run, dude. What a grind it, take, it takes to get that run, but sub 50, it's real. Four failed attempts, right? Where you were grinding for this specific run? Four failed attempts in World 5, yeah. Wow. Just for this one to push through and actually get it. And as good of a run as it is, it's still definitely beatable. I make a lot of mistakes in different points, but... That's for something in the future. All right, though, that's the run. Sub 50, absolutely legendary. So anything you want to add, Talon, and anyone checking out this video, if you want to watch more speedrunning, be sure to check them out. YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, it'll all be in the description. So what I want to say is that I'm doing a run on Games Done Quick, which is a speedrunning charity marathon on January 12th, around 10.30 p.m. EST. And if you want to watch another commentated Splatoon speedrun, that is the one that you will want to be there for. So I highly suggest checking that out when it happens. Other than that, I do speedruns on my Twitch all the time. I'm trying to get top three in Octo expansion, maybe world record at some point. And yeah, it's about it. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in another video.